Martha and Alito, what exactly did she say? Have a listen. You know what I want? I want a sacred part of Jesus flag because I have to look across the lagoon at the pride flag for the next month. She's on the team. She is proud of the sacred heart and admits, in fact, that it is the solution to the problem. Justice Alito's wife, she got caught in an undercover audio recording James O'Keefe style. I'm going to be sharing that with you at 14 past the hour because I think it's it's pretty inspiring. It's actually pretty inspiring. So I'll be playing that recording and sharing an article with you about Justice Alito's wife who seems to have it figured out about the only solution to this month's issues of pride is the Sacred Heart of the Savior Jesus Christ. By the way, my name is Joe McLean. I host a radio program called A Catholic Take, where we look at the world through a Catholic lens. I'd love for you to hang out with us. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comments below. You know, I, I really couldn't care less about what Justice Alito had to say because I'm too busy fascinated by what his wife had to say. There's an article out of LifeSite News. The headline says, thanks to Justice Alito's wife, the world now knows the Sacred Heart is the solution to LGBT pride. Oof, let that sink in. What is going on here? A little bit of the article, it says, two opposed flags flown by two opposed camps, driven by two opposed desires deeply at war with each other. The world now knows that the sacred heart of Jesus is the antithesis and solution to LGBT pride, thanks to Martha and Alito, a, and a left-wing activist, and the flags under which they stand. What in the world? Well, it turns out that uh, Lauren Windsor, who writes for the Rolling Stone, and it's funny because the last time I actually read a Rolling Stone article on this show, YouTube gave me a strike. They flagged me. They did not like what I had to say, so they, they, they punished me, slapped my hands. But nonetheless, Lauren Windsor went to a party, a gather, some sort of gala or something along those lines, where all of the justices were there and, of course, many other people. And they thought they were in like-minded company or, what, or whatnot. And Laura basically said she to get into this party, she claimed she was a conservative and she was hobnobbing and she was going all James O'Keefe, Project Veritas undercover-like, trying to catch these, these uh, so-called conservatives uh, unawares. And so she recorded some things, which is where we get this article from the New York Times about what Justice Alito had to say, as well as others. But I want to play for you a little bit of this clip that Lauren Windsor posted to her ex-post or ex-profile here of the actual recording of Martha and Alito unfurled, unfurled. What exactly did she say? Have a listen. What I want, I want a sacred part of Jesus flag because I have to look across the lagoon at the pride flag for the next month. Exactly. And, and he's like, oh, please don't put up a flag. I said, I won't do it because I'm deferring to you. But when you are free of this nonsense, I'm putting it up and I'm going to send them a message every day. Maybe every week I'll be changing the flags. There'll be all <laughs> kinds. I made a flag in my head. This is how I, I satisfy myself. I made a flag. It's white and it's yellow and orange flames around it. And in the middle is the word vergogna. Vergogna in Italian means shame. Vergogna. V-E-R-G-O-G-N-A. Isn't that fascinating? In a, in a week where we've we've been talking about Italian words, haven't we? Just recently. Uh, Fracciogini was one of those Italian words that came out of Pope Francis not once but twice uh, to describe the lavender mafia type culture at the Vatican and in Italian seminaries. And here's another one. Vergogna. Vergogna. Shame. Shame. She wants to put up a sacred heart of Jesus flag, uh, and uh, which is, I think, impressive because she's on the team. She is proud of the sacred heart and admits, in fact, that it is the solution to the problem. And this uh, LifeSite News article goes, goes even further here. Let me read it to you. It says, an undercover left-wing journalist thought she would target and humiliate the wife of the conservative Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito by exposing her extreme opposition to the favored pet of the left, Pride Month. Instead, she revealed her own gross ignorance of a long-standing, strong Catholic devotion and unwittingly proclaimed to the world the true antidote to the perverse pride that flies the sexualized rainbow flag. 
In a derisive tone, Lauren Windsor posted her recording conversation with Martha Ann Alito, highlighting the letter's intention to fly a flag displaying the sacred heart of Jesus in defiance of the pride flag flown by the activist during the month of June. The Hill, in its first report on the matter, initially called the Sacred Heart flag a symbol associated with the Christian right wing, specifically used to protest pride. This was quickly but quietly changed to now read, the Sacred Heart of Jesus flag has been used by some opponents of gay rights to protest pride and LGBTQ rights in general. The Hill published a second piece criticizing Alito for her Sacred Heart flag comments, attempting to characterize her as an extreme right-wing radical. First, it should be noted that, as any educated Catholic knows, devotion to the Sacred Heart is a centuries-old Catholic devotion that has found its place in nearly every Catholic church throughout the world. Rarely does a Catholic church not display prominently a statue or image of the Sacred Heart of Christ. It is perhaps the most common statue outside churches as well, second only to the cross. In Paris, on the site where Christ appeared to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque in the 1670s, revealing the love of his sacred heart for the whole world and asking for reparation for the sins of sacrilege and blasphemy, the impressive Basilica of the Sacred Heart, Sacre Coeur, towers over the entire city on its highest hill. There, in fulfillment of our Lord's request for reparation, prayers are continually offered to the heart of Christ in the Eucharist through perpetual adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, I, there's more I could read here, but uh, you know what else caught my attention this morning and, re, and sort of tangentially related to this? Was uh, in Vienna, there are posters going around of the Sacred Heart of Jesus in Vienna. There are warriors all over the planet who are proud to be on the team of the Most Sacred Heart in reparation for the gross and disgusting uh, perverse culture that has crept up and infected society. We had 14 days to slow the spread back in 2020 that uh, went on for about, what, a year and a half or so? And this virus is far more lethal than that could ever have been. And yet we are to be shamed because we proudly proclaim the Sacred Heart in reparation for these crimes against humanity? <sighs> well, Vienna is also a place that's giving apparently one of its churches over to become a nightclub, which we've seen several videos, examples of that flying around the internet the last several months. Active churches in England, for instance, have been given over to nightclubs, uh, and they take out the pews, and they do their rave dances, and their, and their, dis their just diabolical atmosphere to say the least. If you don't think that we are in a fight for the immortal souls of humanity, then you are absolutely mistaken. And if you don't think that you have to make a choice, you got to choose, you got to pick a team, then you are absolutely mistaken. If you think that you're going to befriend the world and the world's just going to like somehow click and just somehow come along, and just somehow accept the truth when you have failed to, to plant that seed of truth in their heart because you have somehow accepted their sins as being normal, then you are mistaken. If the world, if the, let's just give you an example. If the church somehow tomorrow decided that my personal sins were no longer sins but somehow okay, that would be doing me an injustice. Because if I don't get held to an account, if I don't repent of my sins, if I don't confess and make reparation for my sins, then I will go to my judgment with that. And as scripture makes very, very clear in Revelations 21, 27, nothing unclean will enter heaven. Have you any idea why Adam and Eve weren't allowed to stay in the Garden of Eden? It's because they were living in sin and nothing unclean can enter heaven into paradise nothing if they had stayed they would have been consumed by the fire that is god and nothing would have been left out of mercy for them where they kicked out and a fiery sword put in the path to prevent them from coming back and over to the thorns and the thistles they had to go the blood sweat and tears to labor to labor now in suffering Whereas before they were in paradise, 
If we ever want to get back to paradise, then we have to repent and do reparation for our crimes and the crimes of our neighbors, our friends, our loved ones. And this is that month to do such reparation. Right now, thanks to groups like the Tradition Family and Property that are running that campaign in Vienna, putting posters up all over. But I wonder, where are the other nine? We talked to Ross McKnight uh, just, what, last week about the rally that he led. He and others, brave men, led in reparation at a pride rally in Louisiana, one of the most pious Catholic pious uh, epicenters of the world, let alone the United States. And yet in the heart of Catholic piety in America is a pride parade. And yet we also know that Father James Martin and the comedians, by the way, did you know the comedians got to meet with the Pope? Oh yeah, it was a good time. Laughs were had by all. And then did the Pope meet with the Dubia Cardinals? Oh no, 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 he didn't. Did the Pope meet with Cardinal Zen? Nope, nope. He left Cardinal Zen hanging out in St. Peter's Square and never got an audience before he had to return back to Hong Kong and to jail. Well, potential jail anyway. No, he didn't meet with him either. But he did meet with the, the comedians. Yeah, he met with them for sure. And he met with Father James Martin to reaffirm him. Well, it's kind of like talking out of both sides of your mouth. You got to pick a side. You got to choose. You got to decide whose team you're on. And I'm going to argue that you want to make that decision before it is too late. As for me and my house, we have decided to serve the Lord. Let the chips fall where they may. If you actually love the world, if you truly love your neighbor, then you must proclaim the truth to your neighbor. Because there's nothing greater, no greater act of charity than you can give than to lay down your life for a friend and to give them truth itself. Truth is a person. That person is Jesus Christ, and he suffered on that cross, laboring to bring about the salvation of wayward sinners like you and like me. And we should never, not for one instant, pretend as though the virus that's infecting this world isn't diabolical, evil, and must have its head crushed. So proudly proclaim the Sacred Heart. Put up your flags. Let the whole world know what side you're on. Let there be no doubt. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Did you like that video? It's okay. You can admit it. It's perfectly fine. Hey, we cover the big stories of our day from inside the church to outside the church to all points in between. And we do it from a Catholic perspective. It's called a Catholic take. It's a radio program Monday through Friday. We live stream it right here on this channel, by the way. So make sure to subscribe, like, and share. We would be very grateful to you. And don't forget, you're going to want to watch this video right here because you don't want to miss anything.